Welcome to the fifth video on galvanic cells, frequently asked questions. So this is a slightly more challenging question with this particular cell that we're going to be looking at. Let's have a look at the cell we're talking about in this video. The first thing is, is we've got two half cells here. We've got the first one half cell here with the nickel electrode, and then we've got one with the copper electrode. You've been told that the nickel electrode is 10.27 grams initially. And they've been given more details here about the electrolyte solution. So 200 mils of 0.1 molar nickel nitrate, and then the same for copper nitrate. So let's just have a look at some questions that you could possibly get asked on this. The first one is, I guess, simply to identify the anode and the cathode, the direction of electron flow. And what you need to do here is refer to your standard table of reduction potentials. So one should be popping up now. That's a typical one uh, table that you see. And remember the ones closest to the top, the more active metals have a negative reduction potential. And those ones are very, very active metals. They want to lose electrons, which means they're very strong oxidants. So we look at where nickel is, we look at where copper is, and the one that's higher up, that is the one that's going to be oxidized. And in this case, it's nickel. And when I like to do these things, I try to draw it always the same. On the left hand side is going to be the one that's oxidized, and the one on the right hand side is going to be the one that is reduced, and therefore the electron flow is always going in a clockwise fashion. So if we were to identify the anode, the anode is where oxidation occurs, and of course we remember that with anox, right? So an and then ox. So oxidation occurs at the anode, and that's nickel, so therefore this is the anode. And so we can uh, label that. Um, let's just do this anode. And the anode is negative, so the electrons are coming out of the anode. They're going in a clockwise direction down to the copper, and copper is being reduced. And so it is the cathode. And we can remember that by red cat. So red cat. Right, a red cat for redox at the cathode. So we've identified the anode and the cathode, and uh, we could, I'd, I'll just write that up here. Nothing like a notification while you're making a video. Anyway, there are some of the basic things there. So what we want to do here is now find um, some more detailed information. We're told that we've got 10.27 grams of the mass of the nickel anode to begin with. Now, when this is connected, we're going to get a voltage difference between the two electrodes here. And I'm going to say that there is some plating occurring on the cathode. And that plating is solid copper. And let's say we scrape that plating off and we have a certain mass of that. Right? And let's say that the mass that we're going to get is 2.7 grams. Right? So the mass of the copper that we measure over there is 2.7 grams. Now here's the question. What is the final mass of the nickel anode? So I want you to pause it, think about it, have a bit of a calculation attempt, and then we can see how you go. And I'll give you a bit of a hint. To do this, you need to write, first of all, an overall cell equation. All right, pause it now and see how you go. All right, let's see how you went. To write a first of all equation here, let's, let's look at how we do that. So we know that oxidation is occurring at the anode, and that's nickel. Now, if we want to look at the cell potential, may as well work it out. And, the, and um, if we look at that, um, we had to reverse nickel. And so it's positive 0.24 volts um, on from our electrical, um, from our standard reduction potential. Now we have to write the half cell equation for the uh, copper, so the copper. Okay, so remember when you look at the question and that you look at the reduction potentials that you're making sure you're using the right copper because there's copper one and copper two. We can see here it's copper two, and so therefore we've got to make sure we use the correct um, half equation. So now we've got our both equations up here and we re reverse the nickel because it's the one being oxidized, so we need to reverse the sign, remember that. Now we add them together to get an overall cell equation. So the electrons cancel out, and so we end up with nickel solid, and that's 
Okay, running out of room here. But anyway, so we add that together and we get 0.58 volts. So that is the E cell, right? The 0.58 volts, we call that E cell. So the standard potential difference of the whole cell. Sometimes you see a little circle up here with a line through it, and of course that means standard um, E cell, which is under standard conditions. So that step one is writing the equation. We need to know that equation to answer our question, and our question is, what is the um, mass of the nickel anode once this cell has been turned off? We recorded 2.7 grams was the mass of copper plated over there. So I'm just going to rub some of this stuff out to get some more room. I'll rewrite this equation up here, and then we'll get into answering and finding the mass of the electrode. Okay, and we're back. Now I think just in that last little section there, I said that the mass plated out was 2.7 grams. What I should have said was the mass of the electrode was 2.7 grams. When we recorded the mass of the deposit, it was 0.395 grams. Okay, so just a clarification there before we get in there. So we've got the 10.27, which is the mass of this electrode. 2.7 was the mass of that. And then, of course, what we plated out was 0.395 grams. So, to work out the mass of this nickel electrode, that's the nickel electrode just there, we can use our understanding here of the mass of the copper that's deposited to work out the number of moles of copper deposited, then use our molar ratio to work out the moles of cop um, nickel that... Um, decomposed and then the final mass. So let's do that. So here's the mass here. So the number of moles of the copper that was formed is equal to the mass divided by the relative atomic mass of copper and that's 0 0.395 divided by the atomic mass of um, copper 63.55 and that turns out to be, looking at the notes, of course, 0 0.006215. Okay, so that is the number of moles of copper that was plated out on the outside of the copper electrode. So now we know that. We know it's a one-to-one -one ratio here. So the amount of moles produced should be equal to the amount of moles that were um, lost from the nickel electrode. Because what you have to remember... As, as nickel has been oxidized, this electrode is slowly being eroded away. It's slowly breaking apart as the nickel is going into solution. So the number of moles formed is equal to the number of moles lost from nickel, right? So therefore, the moles of nickel that was, I guess, um, yeah, that was lost from the electrode is the same. Okay, so we want to convert that into a mass value now. So the mass of nickel that was lost is equal to the number of moles times the atomic mass of nickel. So 0 0.06215 times by the atomic mass of nickel. And we get 58.69. We do the calculations there and we get 0 0.36. 479 grams okay so therefore to answer our question to find the final mass of the electrode it's the initial mass minus the mass that was lost of the anode which was the nickel is the I guess you could go the initial mass take away the mass that was lost so we can call that L which is that one there so the initial mass was 10.27 hopefully you can see this right um, minus 0 0.36479 and I'll just write that up here and so therefore the final mass is equal to checking the notes 9.9 g okay so that should be the mass there 9.9 .9 grams that's step one because I've got some more questions for you about this one. Double check to make sure you understand that, and I'll see you in the next section with another question related to this galvanic cell.
Okay, here's another question that they ask sometimes when they give you the um, concentration and uh, volume measurements is what is the concentration of the nickel nitrate solution once it's been turned off? So we have just determined the mass changes of our electrodes. And in to do that, we actually calculated the number of moles that was lost from the electrode. So it's losing nickel ions into solution. So the concentration of nickel is going to go up. So from um, an observational point of view, what we can see is that the color intensifies. So nickel's green. And so the intensity of the green um, coloring within that half cell increases. That's what we observe visually or macroscopically. But let's do some calculations to show that the concentration of nickel um, has gone up. All right. So let's uh, let's do let's think about this. We've worked out the number of moles that was lost from the electrode. We know that concentration is n divided by v. So we know that the the concentration that was there at the begin with has increased by this number of moles, and the volume, of course, has stayed the same. So what was the initial molar concentration? Well, we are told that um, the number of moles is equal to the concentration, which is 0 0.1, times the volume, which is 0 0.2, so 0 0.02. So we're starting off with 0 0.02 moles of the nickel in the solution, right? Or the nickel nitrate solution. So, but to find the final concentration, Cf, it would be the number of moles you started with, which is this, 0 0.02, plus the number of moles that was lost from the electrode into solution, which was this one over here. Right, so that's the number of moles there, the total number of moles, N, and we divide that by the volume, which is the same, which is 0 0.2. And when we do the calculations, you should end up with 0 0.131 molar. So it's increased its concentration from 0.1 to 0.131. So the concentration has gone up, and of course, macroscopically, we can see the intensity of the green solution also increases. So that is a highly quantitative question that you may get with this um, type of galvanic cell. Hope that all makes sense for you. Go through with the calculations. So if they do try to be sneaky and change it, you'll know how to uh, answer it. Okay, um, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to explain some more galvanic cell questions and uh, see how you go.